Thank you very much. Now we have four minutes of discussions. Um, is there any uh, question in the audience concerning uh, the retirement party of prematurity? Hapsad, you have a lot of experience with retinopathy of prematurity. Of course, yeah. um, I was just thinking, Shingul, mm -hmm. uh, the, um, we, uh, just like a month ago, I met uh, also a six years old guy, a uh, child with, uh, you see the retina kind of atrophic, but the, the nice thing is the fibrous tissue is so mature that you can really easily remove it. And uh, I'm expecting as well to flatten the retina because it's, um, it's I think, um, a, a safer surgery than dealing with a very attached vitreous, right? This is what's your opinion on that as well. Actually, uh, uh, you're touching to a very important point. Uh, when I see some membranes, which is very uh, uh, tightly attached to retina, uh, just causing uh, faults, uh, but you don't see any anterior posterior traction, then I usually don't touch those eyes because you may end up with retinal break <coughs> and you may lose the present vision. But in such eyes, when you see the, that anterior posterior traction, because one end was at the back of the lens, so you see that traction and you can imagine that uh, that traction has increased during the eye growth. So and it's easy to remove, you know. It, you, you don't have to remove all the fibrotic tissue, but you have to, you can remove at least anterior posterior traction, you can, you can just cut it. Then they, that may uh, relieve the retina and macula, so uh, you will end up with a better vision. So it's important to select the eye properly. Um, I have a question for Dr. Gullik, uh, if you don't mind. Um, very nice thought, the, I think the idea of having uh, a subtle uh, ciliary body detachment or iridu ciliary detachment in chronic <coughs> hypotony um, that might be seen on UBM or not is one of the reasons I think you, you're doing that, right? Yes. Uh, in this specific group of patients, there was no, there was no ciliary detachment. Okay. They were all atrophic cases. Uh -huh. Because how I know that they were all recurrent earlier cases and they, uh, I, I operated their final operations, I did my, uh, it's the final operation, and I checked the their body, so I saw nothing. They were atrophic, and the most prominent finding was uh, explaining why they are uh, hypotonic. There were a lot of uh, laser burns from equator to the periphery, so I think it's the uh, major cause of uh, ischemic changes, the ciliary body ischemia, and it goes to atrophy, and. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Any final question from the audience? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Gulik as well. Uh, what's the timing you choose to start using this technique? I mean, I, I've seen quite a few patients uh, of mine post uh, vitrectomy and removal of the silicone oil, especially those patients who had uh, initial very strong inflammation in the post-operative yeah, yeah. period of the initial surgery that develop at the end extensive uh, or severe hypotony that's persistent. I try systemic steroids, uh, topical, they don't work. And I finally go to silicone oil injection, but still the eye is hypotonous in spite of the silicone oil. So we have a special timing for interve this intervention. Yeah, that's a good po uh, point. Uh, it depends on the case. If it's a silent case, let's, let's think uh, everything is in control, the retina is attached, uh, it's the time of silicone oil removal. You do a very uh, 10 minutes operation to get the silicone oil. Then, while taking the silicone oil, if it is at the borderline, you can just uh, put the CTR. No, I mean but after silicone oil removal. During the... Yeah, you, do, you don't know if this patient is yeah, going yeah. to develop hypotony. I, I have no time to explain this, but uh, the group is very heterogeneous. Uh, some have a small amount of aqueous secretion, some more. Uh, but my uh, command, overall command is that if the eye is filled with silicone oil and the IOP is around 6, 5, or it's about from 6 to, let's say, 10 millimeters per degree, if you remove the silicone oil, you, you have still a chance to have hypotony. But if the eye is filled with silicone oil and when you put the CTR and it's above that levels, above 10 millimeters or more, then you may have a chance to remove the silicone oil and the keep, you can keep the eye with, with its own. But you have to keep in mind that if there is a lot, I, uh, I have another patient in this group, a highly myopic patient with a large retin retinectomy, silicone oil has another meaning, uh, filling the eye and closing the 
uh, other routes of acosomer outflow, uh, especially in cases of retinectomy, large retinectomies. When you remove the silicone oil, the outflow part is open again, and uh, your CTR implantation fails. So the other uh, must, must be, there must be no large retinectomies while removing the silicone oil. If the posterior segment is intact, if their retina is covering everywhere, then, uh, and if the uh, IOP level is more than 10 millimeters, then you can remove silicone oil.